Hi, it's Jan Beta, and I'm back at the PlayStation 2 that I refurbished in the last video. What I want to do today is to mod this and uh, in former times you usually had to put in a mod chip and run all kinds of little botch wires uh, across the circuit board. Nowadays there is a way easier method of soft modding the PS2, which I find quite interesting. And I'm also going to put a 250 GB hard disk into the PS2 to be able to play games from the actual hard disk, which is of course made possible by the means of modding this. I'll try to make this a video that can be used as a kind of tutorial on how to do this, but I'm doing this the first time myself, so um, if it doesn't work out as planned, please don't be mad at me. Um, I'm going to try my best and uh, put all the links where to get stuff in the description below the video. And also uh, I'm going to show the steps necessary to do this. And hopefully in the end we are going to have a PS2 or I am going to have a PS2 with the hard disk inside um, that I can rip my game DVDs to and play the games from the actual hard disk uh, without inserting the uh, game DVDs. Which is kind of handy if you want this in a permanent setup in the living room, which I kind of plan to do. Okay, first of all, the soft mod. And it's called a soft mod because we don't have to do anything but this. This is now fully modded PlayStation 2. <laughs> what I actually did to achieve the soft mod was to insert a memory card with the free Mac boot bootloader on it, which basically is a PlayStation 2 mod which allows all kinds of neat stuff. Um, among other things, it allows you to load games from hard disk, which is what I am concerned with. This works for all versions of the PS2, whereas you can only uh, have an internal hard disk on the fat models like mine. Because the PlayStation 2 has USB ports, uh, you can connect an external hard disk, but I've heard, I haven't tried this yet, as I was, as I was saying, I'm doing this for the first time myself, um, I heard that the external hard disk doesn't work quite as well as um, putting an internal hard disk inside. So yeah, let's try and put a hard disk inside. So here's what we need. Of course, we need a hard disk. I chose this uh, 250 GB Samsung IDE hard disk that I don't need for any other purposes. Uh, I bought a USB uh, to IDE converter and SATA. Uh, cheap one, I'm going to link this one in the description. Uh, I think it works quite well for the price, didn't pay much for this. Um, I think it's a useful thing to have um, if you are working with old hardware. <laughs> and I didn't have one before, so I just got one. Used this as an excuse to get one, finally. Okay, now we need this, which is an adapter. Um, these were made back in the day as well for the PlayStation 2, an adapter for network and IDE drives uh, that slots in the expansion slot on the back of the machine so you could um, play uh, network games and access the internet back then. Um, this doesn't have, this version doesn't have the uh, Ethernet connector so yeah, it really says don't connect. It has an IDE connector and a power connector for the hard disk drives though, which is what I find more important. There are different versions of this. I think you can still get um, the original ones as well, like used ones from back in the day. I don't think they sold that many, at least not uh, in Europe. They were not very popular. There were um, also kits to use the PlayStation 2 um, as a full-blown Linux computer basically like with the keyboard and the mouse uh, connected via USB I believe. Those were also not very popular here. I've never seen one in person 
but uh, that stuff exists. So um, this was really useful if you had uh, this machine as an internet, as a means of accessing the internet as well. And uh, yeah, basically this is the cheap knockoff. I, I think I just bought the cheapest one I could find. There are ones that have SATA connectors as well nowadays. There are um, versions that still have the Ethernet port and uh, that supposedly works. I just wanted to add a hard disk because I'm not very concerned about the Ethernet stuff um, for my purposes. But if you want to experiment with that, feel free to do so. I'm going to try to find some links um, where to get this. I think I just bought it on eBay and just uh, searched for PlayStation 2 IDE adapter or something like that. Network adapter probably would work as well. So you're probably going to find this. You're all smart people, I guess. <laughs> now we need to prepare the hard disk for being usable by the PS2, actually. And that's the most tricky bit. So we are going to switch to my Windows desktop and I'm going to try to walk you through the installation process. As I said, I'm trying this for the first time myself, so I hope it works. Fingers crossed. So I have my IDE hard disk connected via my uh, newly acquired USB adapter. I uh, hope this thing works correctly and uh, we are going to initialize this hard disk for the PlayStation 2 um, proprietary format. And for that purpose we are using a software called WinHIP Win that I'm of course going to link in the description. And we want to run this as an ad administrator because otherwise it won't work at all. Uh, because it can't access the hard disks. Um, yeah, Windows HDL image installation program. Okay, so we want to start this and select drive. Okay, so we are going to select drive 4 because that's the one we have. We don't have a PS2 master boot record on it. So we choose format drive and this should all be okay, I guess. We want to go main HD loader. I have no idea what this means. We are just going to go with okay and see if that works. Are you really certain that you wish to format the selected hard drive? Yes. Format process cannot be reversed. Okay, I know. Okay, HDL settings partition has been created. Please be aware that even if you install images when this drive is first started up with HDL, PS2 will display it as software license for you to accept. It's not a sign that HDL wants to format the drive. That's a different question. Okay. Okay, we have HD loader 48 bits. 48 bits are required for um, larger hard disks as this one is. Um, we should now be able to just add ISO images to this. But, yeah, where to get ISO images, you might ask. And, uh, of course, there's ways to obtain ISO images in uh, not-so-legal ways across the web uh, that I'm not going to show in this video, of course. Um, you are responsible for your own actions, though. I am just going to make a copy of my existing original um, DVDs that I have, and I'm going to show you how. So for that purpose I installed ImageBurn, which is a rather old uh, application, but it still seems to be the consensus uh, among people that this is the way to go, to have a convenient way of making images, ISO images from DVDs of all kinds. Uh, yeah, basically you just insert a DVD and then you want to create image file from disk. And that's basically what you have to do. So we are just going to insert a DVD and do it. And apparently my DVD drive in my PC broke, so I have to use this USB thingy that I have lying around and I hope that this works. 
<laughs> I'm not too sure about that, but uh, we're going to see in a second. So I'm doing create image file from disk. Found one DVD. Okay. So, there we go. Read speed maximum. Documents. Oh, and it already, it's a Spyro, um, the Spyro game, and it already uh, named it correctly. Yeah, let's just go. Seems to be quite good. Okay. Let's see what it does. Apparently there's a way to do this um, from your PlayStation 2 directly, so use the um, internal drive of the PlayStation 2 to do this. I'm going to show you that method too. But usually uh, PC DVD drives are a lot faster than the rather old um, PlayStation 2 drive. And also you maybe don't want to risk damaging the um, PlayStation 2 drive, so you don't want that to uh, get any more use than absolutely necessary. And maybe it's even broken and that's why you are installing a hard disk in the PlayStation 2 in the first place. So I'm just going to show you this method because that's the, the most convenient uh, one. This is probably going to take a while. Yeah, so I'm just going to um, stop recording for now and come back when this is finished. And the operation successfully completed. Okay, so now we should have a nice ISO file of our Spyro disk. And we should be able to start WinHeap again as an administrator because otherwise it would work. Uh, select drive. Now our drive should spin up again, hopefully. Yes, I can hear it spinning up. This is our PS2 formatted drive now, it shows correctly. Now we add images. Oh, we can use the CD DVD drive directly, it seems. That's rather convenient. We should try that as well. So, let's have the Spyro thing. Let's start. And we can set uh, all kinds of settings here. Usually, I think it works uh, without changing anything. And now it copies the ISO file to the hard disk, basically. The images have been installed. Okay. Yeah, so there's our spiral. Nice. So now we should be able to install this hard disk into our PlayStation 2 and play Spyro from the hard disk. Let's try. So that should just be a matter of... I'm taking this off, of course. Um, connecting this to our adapter. Should fit somehow. Yeah, it does. Okay. And then this should slide into the PS2. And connect. Yeah. And you can use uh, a penny or something. If you have a penny. If you want to give me a penny, check out my Patreon or the channel memberships. <laughs> If you already gave me some pennies, thanks for your support. That means the world to me at the moment. So, here we are. Hard disk installed. Easy as that. This is a lot heavier now. <laughs> Obviously. I'm reconnecting it. Uh, yeah, let's see if this worked. We should now be able to start our Spyro from the hard disk. So we should see our free Mac boot, boot screen, which we do. And we should now be able to start the open P2 
PS2 loader, I think. And maybe... Yeah, the hard disk is spinning up. And look at that, there's Spyro! Yay! There's, there, of course, there will be all the games that you have on there listed. You should be able to play Spyro from hard disk now, I guess. Yeah, the hard disk is rather loud. I, I might consider putting uh, a bit quieter one inside there. Don't know if you can hear it through the microphone. But, yay! Actually playing Spyro. And I already played some games of Spyro to test it if the um, DVD works. And actually, to prove that it runs from hard disk, this is the uh, original DVD. Let me just load a game so uh, we don't have to see the boring tutorial. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's the story of my videos. I'm older, they take a really long time to tell stories. Okay, so here's the method you would use if you uh, only had the PlayStation 2 with the hard disk inside. Um, you would put the hard disk inside and uh, put a USB stick with the HDL installer software on it into it. And then you could uh, use Freemic Boot to start the ELF, which is like an application format for the PS2, on the USB stick. So yeah, let me just do that. Um, it's called ELF Manager in my case. Uh, on most Freemic Boot installations, it would be called uh, ULaunch ELF, I think, which is the same. Uh, application basically so hard disk spins up you will you would uh, start the file browser go to mass which uh, accesses the USB port and then we have HDL game installer which we click OK on and that should start now I think you can also install that on the hard disk. Um, you can use ulaunch elf um, to copy files across the different, uh, the different media. And this also has the function of being able to uh, connect to the network if you have an adapter with the ethernet port, which I don't obviously, as you've seen. So I'm not going to be able to show you this feature yeah there's no network connection of course because I'm not connected to the network with this one you are also able to um, start things from the network I think which could, can be quite convenient uh, so yeah there we go now we should be able to just insert a DVD we should push the start button install the game it's reading the disc. GTA Vice City is the full title. And now we just push X. OK. And it should read the game. Oh, we can change the title. GTA Vice City is fine. Uh, so we just push and start. Enter. Next. Proceed. Okay. Icon source. Okay. Proceed. Okay. Yeah, and now we basically are doing the same we did before uh, with the image burn software, but we're doing this internally basically. And as you can see, the time says about half an hour for this uh, rather large game. So
so yeah. It does work, but it takes a while. Okay, we're nearly there. Hope this did work. It literally took half an hour, like it, it said. The, the time remaining count was actually quite accurate. So, takes a while if you do it this way. The other method is recommended if you have a fast DVD-ROM drive. Game installed successfully. Okay, there we are, Vice City. Let's quit the program and see if we can actually start Vice City. And I'm of course removing the DVD so we can determine if this actually worked. Okay, so this should now pop up in our open PS2 loader. So, by the way, you can, of course, um, let me enter the menu. You have to um, set this to the HDV. You have to set the HDD device start mode to on or auto in this case, um, so that it sees the hard disk drive right away. You can also just set it to um, start with the HDD games menu, which I did which is rather convenient. Um, so you get the screen just as I had it with the games. Let's see if GTA Vice City actually works from hard disk. Maybe. Okay, this looks promising. <laughs> and it should be a lot faster from hard disk. Yeah, it is, definitely. It, al it already is faster. Let's see if this actually loads. Yeah. Oh, look at that, okay. So it is definitely a lot faster um, loading from hard disk, of course, as you would expect. That's really nice, actually. Yeah, so... It works. I can play GTA Vice City <laughs> from the hard disk. And this will work for most games, I guess. So yeah, um, we should go back to the free Mac boot menu and be able to start the open PS2 loader and go to all the games we want, basically, that we have on our hard disk. This one also comes with a bunch of emulators that I haven't really tried. Uh, your mileage may vary if you just um, get one from somewhere, one of the free Mac boot memory cards. Um, you can also make your own, but that's kind of a... I found it easier because I didn't have a card anyway to just get a memory card. And uh, yeah, I got another one, so now I have uh, a couple of memory cards, one with free Mac boot, which makes it easy to load stuff from hard disk. Yeah, I guess that's it for today. I have a hard disk installed in my PlayStation 2 now and can play my games from hard disk rather than using the DVD drive. The um, access times are much faster, actually, so it's more convenient to play from hard disk. Um, yeah, hope this was informative. Maybe this helps you getting more out of your old or rather modern still PlayStation 2. And if you have any other suggestions for more mods or ideas what to do with the PlayStation 2, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, thank you so much for supporting me if you are a supporter of my channel. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to this channel. There's a lot more like this and similar stuff, uh, mostly concerning retro computing and yeah, vintage electronics of all kinds, really. I'm Jan Beta, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Ah. <laughs>
Wow, okay, destroyed all the dark crystals, it seems. 